Yo, what's going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay, so welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to talk about the CBT, or your compulsory basic training. There are about five different elements you need to go over, so we're going to go over them in a wee bit of detail. So you've got element A, which is the introduction to your CBT, and also an eye test. That's where you basically go over everything that's involved. Sorry, it's got a fly in my eye there. Where you go everything that's involved, and you do an eyesight test, just like what you would do in your mod two. Then element B is on-site practical training. That's basically where you do a bunch of stuff with the bike. Don't worry, we're going to go over this in detail. It's not just a case of doing a bunch of stuff with the bike. <laughs> element C is your practical riding. Element D is your pre-ride briefing. And then element E is when you're out on the road. So that's your five different elements for your CBT. I mean, each school might call them something slightly different. That's what happened when I done my CBT. That's the way we went over it. Now there's one thing you need to know about the CBT is it is an all day course. You will start at probably about nine o'clock in the morning and you should be finished at about four or five in the afternoon. If for any reason you start your CBT and you get your certificate at one o'clock in the afternoon, the school that's been teaching your CBT has not done it correctly. And that is obviously a recipe for disaster because what's happening there is the school has not made sure that you're safe on the road and possibly what they've done is they've let you out on the road without you having the knowledge to make sure that you are safe on the road. So the CBT is an all day thing. It's broken up into two sessions. So you have your morning session and you have your afternoon session. One thing to note about the CBT is it isn't a test. You can't fail it. There's no test involved. It's just a training day. But your instructor can refuse to issue you your certificate if they think that you're not safe enough to go out on the road by yourself. So say you nailed the morning session and you went out in the afternoon and you'd made a total mess of it being out on the road and you put yourself or other someone else in danger, they can say, look, you need a bit more training. You're gonna have to come back another day. And then only when they're comfortable and happy that you're safe enough to be out on the road by yourself, will you get your certificate. So in order to do a CBT in the UK, you obviously need to have at least a provisional license. I'll leave a link up to my license video. We've done that a few weeks back and it goes through all the different licenses that you can get in the UK for a motorbike and what age you need to be and what you can ride etc. So if you don't have any license at all, you will have to apply for the provisional. If you're a car driver, you won't need to because you've already got a full valid car license, so that covers it. If you passed your driving test before February 2001, you can ride about on a 50cc moped without taking your CBT, but you are restricted to a 50cc moped. If you pass your test after February 2001, you'll still have to do a CBT, but that's only for a moped. If you want to ride a 125, regardless when you pass your test, you'll have to do a CBT. There's only really a couple of bikes you can ride on the CV CBT. I don't mean brands and models, I mean engine size. So basically, a 50cc moped, if you're 16 or if you're 17 and upwards, you can ride up to a 125. Including the moped if you want, that's absolutely fine. Element 8 is the introduction to your CBT. That also includes an eye test, so you will be asked to do an eye test. I think it's like 20 meters or something from what I can remember. So if you wear glasses or contact lenses, make sure and take them with you. And then you'll basically go over what's gonna happen throughout the day. They'll go over what's gonna happen in element A. So they'll sit you down and they'll say, this is what's gonna happen throughout the day. We're gonna do element A just now or whatever. And that's gonna include the eyesight test. And then what you'll do is you'll also go over some highway code stuff. You're obviously not gonna go over the whole highway code. There's no way you could do that in the amount of time it takes to get element A done. You know, it's impossible, but what you will do is you'll go over the main fundamental things that bikers really need to know. You know, road markings, safety, all that sort of stuff, you know, so you'll go over that just to make sure that you've got a, a basic understanding of some things. You'll then talk about different types of gear. Now you're absolutely allowed to take your own riding gear if you have it. If you don't, most schools do have gear that you can use. Obviously, just now, 
that might not be the case. I'm not too sure, don't hold me to that. You'd have to get in touch with your local riding school, purely down to COVID. So might not want people wearing helmets and gloves and all that sort of stuff. But check with your school, they might allow it and might just sanitise the absolute crap out of everything once somebody's used it. If you have your own riding gear, you're absolutely allowed to take it. And then you talk about some legal requirements, but that's kind of roughly about the four main things that are going to be in the introduction. You'll go over what a CBT is, what's involved, why you need it. I test, talk about gear, legal requirements, bit of highway code stuff, a bit of theory and stuff like that to make sure that, you know, you're going to be all right out in the road. So element B is your on-site practical training that covers a lot of manual handling of the bike. It covers things like putting the bike on the stand, off the stand. You know, if the bike has a centre stand, you'll have to learn how to do that because there is a little technique that you can use for putting a bike on a centre stand. It's not just a case of you try to use brute force in pulling the bike onto the centre stand. It's, it's not that. It's a little technique that you use. You basically stand on the centre stand and you use your body weight to push the stand down into the ground and it helps spring the bike up. You'll also go over some basic maintenance stuff, you know, how to check things like tyre pressure, oil, make sure the steering's okay, the brakes, all that sort of stuff. you also do a bit of manual handling, so you'll basically learn how to hold the bike, you know, stand with the bike next to you and push the bike about. And that'll include pushing the bike and then stopping with the bike, pushing the bike and, you know, turning the bike as you're pushing it. I can't remember if we've done anything backwards, no, if you have to push the bike backwards, like what you do in your Mod 1. I mean, be prepared for it just in case. I mean, it's not too difficult. I mean, the 125s or even the scooters that you're on, they're not, you know, heavy to push about. It's not like pushing about a, a big bike like this or like a Bandit, because the Bandits are heavy beasts of a bike. You'll also go over all the controls, so you'll go over indicators, lights, if the bike has um, a cutout switch. Not some 125s have them, not all of them, but they'll probably mention it anyway. And you'll also learn how to safely start the bike, you know, making sure that the bike's not in gear when you start it so it doesn't jump forward or anything. And also, cutting the bike out, turning it off, taking the keys out, all that sort of stuff. Because you have to have an understanding of that stuff before you start riding it, you know, so you don't jump on the bike and go, what does that do? Whee! And then you end up doing a wheelie in a car park or something. <laughs> So the next element is element C, and that is your on-site practical training. And that's when you actually get to get on the bike and start doing stuff with the bike. So you'll go over things like already we've done starting and stopping the bike in element B. But you'll do that sitting on the bike, you know, making sure that you've got it all nice and comfortable. You'll also start doing very very basic clutch control stuff getting the bike to start pulling away and then stopping the bike so you will only be going like maybe five miles an hour or something it's not going to be anything too strenuous it'll just be pulling away and then stopping and then you'll probably do that for a bit just to get comfortable with what the bike feels like biting point and then obviously using the brakes because element c is going to be where both of your brakes come into play you'll obviously talk about your brakes in element b as you go over the bike you know what's on the bike and all that sort of stuff then element c that's where you'll learn more about what brakes you should and shouldn't use so slow maneuver stuff it's always a back brake isn't it and if you're slowing down to strip speed off it's the front brake or you can use both if you wish but you'll go over what brakes to use when you're slowing down and then once you've got a good grasp of that you'll start doing slightly more technical stuff it's not technical to the point where it's difficult but if it's your first time doing it it can be very very nerve-wracking because that confidence is at an all-time low because it's your first time essentially sitting on a bike you know you might have previous experience which is absolutely fine but you will get someone who's never been on a bike before possibly never even driven a car before so they are total fresh to the idea of making something with an engine move your instructors want to see that you're comfortable with uh, slow maneuver stuff with your clutch back brake and throttle you know so you'll have to be using all that stuff while you're in a straight line just to keep the bike nice and steady if they're happy then you'll move on to things like slalom and figure of eight and slalom and figure of eight are exactly as they sound if you look up any mod one stuff you'll see all of that kind of thing going on slalom you'll just make your way in and out of cones at a nice slow and steady pace and then figure of eight you'll just basically be doing a figure of eight in the bike you'll also do a u-turn if i remember correctly i think you do a u-turn when you're doing your u-turn don't look at the front of the bike look where you want the bike to go all that sort of stuff and you'll also go over not necessarily cornering 
in element C but what you'll go over is you'll go over how to exit a bend correctly but when you're exiting a bend they'll just want to make sure that you do it correctly you're not gonna you know even though it's a one two five you can still put yourself in a bit of danger on it you know they're not the fastest bikes in the world but you know if you were to ride it unsafe you can still put yourself in a dangerous situation so they make sure that coming out of bends and corners and stuff like that you're doing it nice and safely you'll also go over a bit more braking so you'll do things like maybe getting up to like 20 miles an hour and then stopping the bike and you'll do that for a few times just to get comfortable with it and you'll also go over how to do an emergency stop because you're going to be going out in the road later on that day so it's good to know how to stop the bike in a hurry if you have to so you will do a bit of braking and stuff like that obviously things like that they're going to spend a bit more time on it because it's really really important and your instructor will only move on to the next element when they're comfortable and happy the ratio is like four to one for instructor and students so one instructor can be teaching up to four students at a time and you've got to remember that not every student is going to be learning at the same pace there could be one student who's been on a bike before done their CBT before and they're just rocketing through it and there could be somebody else who's never been on a bike before and it's taking them just a bit longer to pick it up and if that is the case your instructor would probably tell you just to keep practicing all the elements and elements C you know just move off to a different part of the training area and just go over absolutely everything and the instructor will go back and work with the other student until they've got a nice understanding of it so it depends on the school depends on your instructor you know if somebody's fallen behind a wee bit they'll have their own way of uh, of doing things so obviously you what the hell oh my god a car on a wall back there I honestly thought to myself, what a way to park a car. <laughs> and then I saw the bricks. Oh my god, hope they're okay. I think that's what those two ladies were standing talking about actually. You'll also go over observations, mirrors, what you should be doing with your mirrors, your lifesavers, what they are, how you do them, when should you use them. You'll go over all that sort of stuff in element C just to make sure that everything is as safe as possible. You know, that's when you'll learn about your before you move off, check, check. That's where your check checks very first starts on your CBT. So before your riding career starts, before any of your lessons in mod one and mod two start, your check, check is one of the very first things you'll do on a bike. So before you pull away, check, check. You know, if you have to stop at a roundabout traffic lights and it's your turn to move away, check, check. All that sort of stuff, all those observations and things will get, will go over. Is that road open now? I need to check if that road's open. That's a great wee road. It's not a fast road, but it's a lovely wee road to ride on and it's been shut for about two months. I might go around that way and check. See, it's not actually the last thing you'll go over, but it's the last thing I'm going to mention because potentially you might be doing it on a scooter or on an automatic bike. If you're doing it on a geared bike, you're going to go over the gears. How the gears work, you know, how to go move up and down the gears, how to find neutral. You know, I don't think you'll be going up too many gears in element C purely because of you'll be limited on space so you might get up to second or third gear and there'll just be a case of going up going down getting comfortable with changing gears with the clutch and all that sort of stuff and then stopping the bike and finding neutral so that's most of the stuff that's in element C I might have forgot something if I have I apologize but I mean that's roughly what's kind of going to kind of happen on the day and then element D in my personal opinion element D is probably one of the most important elements of the day and that is your pre-ride briefing and obviously this is going to be where the classroom stuff comes in and you're going to have to sit down and do a bit of theory. I mean it's not always the most enjoyable stuff but it's important stuff and once you learn it you know you know it forever. So the pre-ride stuff it's going to go over you know like legal requirements all that sort of stuff you know what you should uh, have on your bike L plates all that sort of stuff what you can and can't do depending on the highway code things like road signs markings all that sort of stuff you'll go over a bit of vulnerability because obviously as a biker we don't have the protection of the shell of a car or airbags or all that sort of stuff so I mean you can get armor with that nowadays you'll then start to go over the actual riding part things like speed limits distance from the car in front of you where you should look road positions roundabouts you know all that really really fun stuff that learners love to learn <laughs> 
You'll go over things like junctions, you know, turning left and right at a junction, whether it be a minor road onto a major road or major onto minor, all that sort of stuff. When you think about it, there is quite a lot involved in the CBT and that's why it takes all day to go over it all and that's the way it should be purely because this potentially might be the only training that individuals gonna have for two years they might never sit their test they might never move up to a big bike or whatever so the compulsory basic training course has to make sure it covers everything feel free to take a pen and a pad with you and write it all down because then once you get your certificate and you're going to go out on the road if for any reason there's anything that you forgot you just refer back to your notes and go aha that's what they said all right so there is quite a lot involved in element d i don't know if i went over it all there but that was like the basics of what you will go over and what you can expect to happen and then eventually becomes the bit that everybody's been waiting for when they're on their CBT and that is element E that is your out on the road ride there's one thing you need to take note here when you're out on the road you should be out for a couple of hours at least all right if you're out for half an hour and then you come back no say to your instructor look I didn't feel like I had enough time there you know can we go back out because legally you've got to be out for a couple of hours and the reason you go out for a couple of hours because that gives you enough time to ride about your local area going over everything that you've learnt in the classroom you know, roundabouts junctions, positioning, speed limits distance from the car in front where you look all that sort of stuff and then once you head back the instructor will either say yeah, I'm absolutely happy with that they'll sign off your certificate and then you have your CBT certificate which means you can now legally ride up to a 125 with L plates for two years once you have your CBT that means that you're now eligible to start training to get a bigger bike you know mod 1 mod 2 again refer to the license video if you're unsure of what kind of license you can get for your age and we go over all that sort of stuff in there so i may have missed some stuff out in the cbt if i have i apologize <laughs> you know i'm pretty sure i went over most of it there might be one or two things that you'll do on the day that i didn't mention but most of the main stuff we kind of went over it and the one thing to remember like we said at the very very start of the video your cbt course should last all day it is not a morning thing you don't go there in the morning and you've got a certificate at lunchtime it does not work like that you've got a morning session you'll stop for some lunch you'll then have the afternoon session so depending how quickly you get through the elements obviously it depends what's going to happen in the afternoon session if you can get through elements a to d in the morning which i don't know if you will to be honest you might get through the first three. Oh, look at the wee camper van dudes nice you might get through maybe elements A to C in the morning and you'll do D and E in the afternoon but just remember if there's anything you're not comfortable with on the day don't hesitate to ask your instructor don't just go with it and go that's ah, fine I'll pick it up later on because you are going out on the road in the afternoon you know and you're going to be with other traffic with other road users there's going to be big ass lorries like that there's going to be buses there's going to be other bikers make sure that you've got a good understanding of what's taught and what's required before element e but don't be nervous about your cbt like i said it's not a test it's basically just a training course which is a lot of fun and when you come back in from your element e i guarantee if you've never been on a bike before you will be buzzing you'll be like, oh my god i want to go back out <laughs> can we go out again get your certificate then go and get a wee 125 either that or just go straight into training for your mod 1 well anyway dudes that's what you can expect to happen on the day when you have your CBT I may have missed one or two things out in the elements I think I got most of it but <laughs> I mean that's pretty much what you can expect to happen the main thing to remember is what we said is it should be an all day course you shouldn't be getting your certificate at lunch time it doesn't work that way if it does then school's not training you right and even if you just want to do a little bit of research 
that's absolutely fine. At the end of the day, it's your safety that's on the line. Phone up or email your local schools, however many you've got. What's involved in the CBT? How long does it take? And if they say, oh yeah, you'll be done by lunchtime. Yeah, no thanks mate. <laughs> I'll go with someone else. Anyway dudes, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Obviously this is aimed at people who are thinking about doing their CBT. It might be handy if you're just wanting a refresher on the CBT for whatever reason. Maybe you've done it before and you're thinking about doing it again but hopefully you found it informative either way but if you enjoyed the videos dudes give it a thumbs up I really do appreciate every single one of your likes and of course if you want to see all of my uploads click on that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're there that way you'll get notified every time I upload a video but until next time dudes stay safe ride safe and take it easy